Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, uh, back and this time with the Nintendo 64. It's funny how one video uh, leads on to another one actually. Um, at the back end of that last video there, uh, after getting Goldeneye working, uh, I played with the N64 for a few days actually. Um, and whilst I was doing that, I thought, these have got a battery. You know, these cheap uh, memory packs here, they've got a battery in. And uh, I got the ingenious idea to check it, just to see what state it was in. Because one of the things I've heard over the years is when the batteries fail on these, the uh, thing becomes completely unusable. And uh, more often than not, even when you swap the battery out, it won't work again. And uh, I started wondering, thinking, I wonder if there's um, like a magic key, a Nintendo header or something within these. Uh, even on the third party ones, you know. Uh, now, I'm not sure that is the case or not. We'll discover as we go a little bit further on into this video here, but the, what I did is, like I said, I took the battery, I took it to pieces. I forget which one it was. I think it was, uh, I think it was this one. I unscrewed the screws there, because I couldn't, I didn't see this here, this little flap to pull the battery out, but it was a good job I didn't anyway, because I would have had the same net results. But I dis, dis, disassembled it. As soon as I removed the screws, the PCB fell out and the battery fell out. And I thought, oh God, there goes my saves. Now, that wasn't the issue. The, the issue then followed. When I connected it all back up again and pumped it back in, it said your memory pack is corrupt. And I thought, that's a bit strange. Um, you know, I can understand it being corrupt, so you choose, okay, uh, try and repair it. And then it said, you know, it's uh, irreparable, or irre some irreparable damage or something has occurred. It's bizarre, the messages that were coming up. So, um, clearly there's something gone wrong with it. I spent some time then inspecting it, and. I even reflowed the SMD chip there. It's a 32K chip. Despite the fact it says 256K, that's in bits. So it's 32KB, you know, 32 kilobytes. Um, I can't find anything wrong with it. Um, and then I was puzzled thinking, well, what's gone wrong? And I realised the battery was not making a proper connection. So I think what had happened is, obviously it had lost the data that was on it from the battery being removed. But that aside, when I'd reassembled it and put the battery back in, the battery was not making a good fit. You know, it was not joined properly, so we didn't have the 3.2 volts roughly there powering that chip. And I think what's happened at that point, and I think it's a common problem, certainly with the third party ones, I think we had a latch up type problem where, you know, the data lines and chip selects and things were all being driven by the N64, but there's no power provided to that chip. And I think that's why these cheap third party ones fail. Because the chip that's on there is pretty good. You know, it's a good brand, it's a sharp one or something. There's nothing wrong with the chips on these. Yes, you know, I've read a lot of people saying these are junk, these, uh, you know, third party cars. Yeah, they are. The PCB quality is awful, etc. The assembly, there's probably no quality control done, even though that says QC on there. But the RAM chips are good. The RAM chips are good branded uh, chips. I'll show you what's happening now. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out the SRAM. I have a replacement, uh, actually. I didn't think I did. I thought I was going to have to order some. Uh, I saw uh, some on eBay. It was about £17 or something for five. I thought, oh, good grief, that's a bit uh, pricey. And I put it on my watch list and then left it for a few days and thought about it and thought, I'm sure I've got probably going to have something similar. So I had a look through my collection in one of the bags from Alice and Chalice. Lo and behold, I just happen to have two, um, they're not the same ones, this is just sharp on here, but I've got a couple of, I think they're either Sony or another make, and I think they're um, the same chips, 32K, I had a look at the pinouts. Um, I compared the data sheets actually, I've got the data sheet for the chip that's on this, you'll see in a minute, the data sheet for the chip that Ali had in her collection, which I'll show you in a minute as well, and uh, they're both the same, the pinouts are the same, the speeds are the same as well, I think so, it should work, uh, but there's a question there. Is there, let's like, say, some magic header or file structure or something that uh, you know is written to these that means that third-party manufacturers can't just produce their own? Because that's a possibility, and that might be why this is now not working because the battery was removed. That you know it's completely initialized, and without some special software or something, you can't stick that header back there in the, you know in a specific location. But that said, what you can do, uh, and I'll perhaps show you that later, you can dump these using the EverDrive, and it saves it to a flat file. And the file is 32k, which leads me to believe that that's a complete dump of the file. Actually, Everything, you know, there's nothing, there's no secret area within these SRAMs. It's just a standard SRAM. So that would uh, make me think that there is no header, and I think a swap of the SRAM will get it working. Um, it'll just be interesting to prove either way, and if anything, it might just get people thinking about um, ways to stop this happening in future. 
So it might be an idea to have a small super cap inside one of these in parallel with the battery actually so that when you remove the battery via the little slot which I can't show you just now but I'll show you in a minute when you remove the little flap there pull the battery out that it won't lose the settings. The alternative is you have to really carefully disassemble it stick some crop clips onto the points where the battery goes inside power it whilst you remove the battery and swap your battery over but there's nothing in the way of capacitance on there to hold any settings, you know, to hold the, the, the SRAM uh, data there whilst you swap the battery. You know, just literally taking it out, putting it back in, that's it, your day is gone. So I'll plug the memory pack in, and you can see you've got the overdrive up here. And if I press the uh, button underneath Z, you'll see we've got a CPAC manager. So that's a nice feature built into the overdrive. And you can see you can copy it to a file, you can format it. I'm not going to do either of those. Um, the other thing you can do is navigate into the ED64 folder and within the CPAC folder that's where it stores that file so if you've backed one up it writes it to that file there and it's as you can see 32k so that's the one I've backed up of my working uh, uh, memory card here I've got some that I downloaded I tried to write some of those to the card but obviously they're bigger 128k so they must have had some memory packs that were bigger than the 32k ones I've got here there are lots of games that have got like a memory pack manager so we start Diddy Kong Racing, hold start down, that will take us into the file manager, or the memory card manager I should say. You can see there straight away, control pack one, corrupt data, and you can see you know, it's in here. And there's no option within this to format it or do anything, any recovery etc, nothing at all, no options. And if I reset it, then we'll load Carmageddon, because I think that has a facility to fix. Uh, it's interesting now they're all different, different games. Um, you know, handling the card a different way. There's nothing standard that was provided by Nintendo by the looks of things, other than maybe the standard structure, you know, of where the save data is stored. Yeah, I'm have to switch it off and on. There's uh, an initialization problem with the EverDrive, actually. It's a bug that was left in. Might be something quick to fix, as I don't know. But if you load one game, then reset it, go back, it doesn't reinitialize everything. So if we just do that again, let's start. I should load the card again. And as you can see there, we've got an issue. Uh, control pack is full. There is not enough note. There are not enough notes or pages. And then you've got three options here. I think continue without saving, manage control pack, insert a new control pack. So let's just do manage control pack, and you'll see this is what we get. There's eight slots there. That's right. I think it's 16. Scroll right down there. To 16. And it shows zero pages free, notes free 16. There should be an awful lot of pages, like 70 or 80 of them. They're not there. There's just nothing there. And there's no option. Um, now, if I mess around with this pack, you know, i.e. remove the battery, stick it back, the battery back in, then plug it back in, it may then say it's corrupt. Do you want to try and recover it? And if I try and do that, we just end up to the same position we are here now, where all you see is pretty much a full, yet clearly empty memory pack. It's just bizarre. Um, so I think the next thing we'll do is I'll tear it to bits um, and show you the SRAM. Before I tear that cart to bits, you can see here this is the other cart, same brand, you know, it's the same manufacturer and everything. This is the normal behaviour that you get with Diddy Kong Racing. So you can see I've still got my saves there. Castlevania was the one I was interested in because I got like to level four or something. Uh, I got quite into that. So I removed the two screws there for just to uh, knock those out. Um, and you can see the battery. I'll, I'll remove the battery first, actually, the battery just comes out like that, it's awful, it really is cheap as anything uh, and you can see the contacts in there, can you see there's a shorting? so that in its own right would be a problem, if you power that up without the battery in now you're, you're definitely going to have a problem because the, the ground and the VCC are connected together, that could kill the SRAM, maybe that's what happened maybe at one point I forgot to do it, to test it with the battery, I honestly can't remember um, but it was uh, you know all part and parcel of checking the battery when it failed uh, and bear in mind, if you're handling something like this, use an ESD wrist strap. Yeah, so there you go, you can see the SRAM. Uh, is that an LH52B256? 70 milliseconds. Um, so yeah, I have reflowed the solder here, and I reflowed the battery contacts as well. I've inspected all the components around here. All we've got is some resistors, about four or five of them, uh, a transistor here that works, and two diodes that work. So it's got to be this chip. Uh, the only question is, is will swapping it out for a working SRAM, um, will that solve it? Or is there some sort of hidden, you know, a special uh, series of bytes that need writing to that to make uh, the system uh, able to use it? 
So I'm going to use the uh, crop clips here. I'll just uh, use this to hold the PCB like this. I'll straighten it up and stuff, rotate this around. And I'm just going to use hot air to remove the chip from there. I think these are actually real-time clock chips, actually. Um, they say SRAM, TK SRAM. But I looked up the part number, f the, the nearest I could find was an M41T94, and it seemed to be a real-time clock chip. Um, can you see they've got weird little round bits on? If you know what those are, please let me know. But within the same bag are some other chips. Yeah, and, and it might be me that's merged these in with the Ali's original chips, because I think this came from an MVS board or something. Can you see that? TC55257. I think it is. Was it five six two five seven? But anyway, uh, I did look up the data sheet for that, and it's thirty two k. So we'll give it a try. Is that going to fit? Is it the same profile? Yeah, it is. So I'll uh, so I'll switch the hot air on. If I had a pound for every time I've tried to film something um, and then found I've started recording after I've actually done what it was I was trying to film, uh, I'd be a millionaire. All I did, set the station here to 350. Heat around in circles like this, you didn't miss anything. I'll show you, it was just me pushing a nozzle like this around the chip, up and down on both sides like this, for approximately 60 seconds. And at the same time, and at the same time, I just had this uh, tool here, just on the underside of the plastic part of the body. And uh, after a minute, it, it, I could see the pins lifting on each side, and it just lifted up. So it came off dead easy, and then I used tweezers to remove it. Uh, so apologies, uh, yeah, it's just one of these things, it's really annoying. So I've got some flux on there, and we'll just go over this with the uh, iron and the desolder braid here. Someone's bound to suggest actually soldering it on with hot air. I had someone uh, point out that recently, actually, in one of my videos. You, you know, you're taking ages, why not just use hot air to stick the chip back on? Um, yeah, and that's a valid point. If you're used to that technique, from my experience, using hot air to solder a chip on, you know, with solder paste and stuff, it works really well with BGA and stuff like that, where the chip pulls itself into position. Not so well with the quad flat pack, because that was the, you know, the comment down in the video in relation to one of the quad flat packs on a PC engine. Personally, I think that's the hardest way. Um, doing it this way and then just drag soldering is far easier, in my opinion. But it's what you're used to, ultimately. You get lots of experience using hot air. You can probably resolder a quad flat pack in no time at all and make it look like I'm doing it the difficult way. I think I've just got some solder on there, actually. Yeah, I did just on the end of that pad, that's annoying. Um, it's because I'm not paying attention. I'm thinking too much about uh, that comment on that video. But if we remove the solder there... The solder that was on there wasn't very good quality, to be honest. I've got the feeling it might be lead free. There we go. So I know some of you have seen this before on my videos, but it's worth covering anyway. I mean, I did completely miss the uh, removal part, so at least I might be able to show you fitting it. So you can see I've just soldered one corner, just rotated the board around, and we'll do the other corner. Uh, and I'm not worried about anything joining up and stuff like that at this stage, you know, if we get any pins joined together or trace like we have there, soldered gone into the wrong place, I'm not bothered about that. Get some uh, fresh flux on here, although there's, there's still probably enough on there uh, from when we uh, mopped up a minute ago with the desolder braid, but it will help. Well, I'll just show you one side, I'll do the other one off camera and tidy it up off camera. But all we need to do now is uh, just get some solder on the iron and dab into each uh, pin here. And if any join together, just use some desolder braid to remove it. So I guess strictly speaking I'm not uh, doing drag soldering here, I'm, well I am, I'm dragging it outwards. That should be it. And we'll inspect really closely with the magnifying glass just to make sure we've got good solder uh, points there, you know it is joined on each pin, we don't have any shorts. But I'll just repeat that process for the other side. So I'll clean up with the uh, cotton buds and IPA to start with just to get the majority of the flux off. 
uh, and then I'll get some IPA on there and just use a, a toothbrush just to get in between the pins and all around these little components and stuff just to make sure we've not got uh, any flux there still and you can see I did get a little bit of solder there on that pin but I managed to remove it with a bit of braid just on the very edge it's not the end of the world so I've got some IPA in a cap and just a little bit of it over there um, and just do a bit of this you know brush into and around do the same on that side the chips not perhaps as straight as it could be I'll show you in a minute you know the alignment uh, of the pins was just off a little bit but I'm not that fussed it's a really cheap board this is not um, an original Nintendo memory pack or anything you know uh, if it's not absolutely perfect in terms of the solder and stuff there I couldn't care as long as it works that's the main thing really I'll clean those car contacts uh, with a bit of IPA in a sec but uh, hopefully you can see we've got a nice clean job there on both sides so I got the PCB back in there I cleaned up the uh, battery contacts you can see the shorten at the moment um, you can only get the battery the one way I'm going to compare it to the other one just to make sure it's uh, positive towards the top but I think it is uh, and then the tray just goes it forces the battery in between the two contacts inside so I've got to hope that this works I've got to hope that battery is making a join inside because this is the big problem with these if it isn't we could kill that SRAM um, but I think we'll, we'll go and plug it in and we'll give it a try uh, fingers crossed so I booted Carmageddon and it said it was corrupt and I could recover it and it's recovered it and here we go you can see now I've got 123 pages free and 16 notes free so the SRAM had indeed died and I'm pretty sure I've killed it with latch up so that's why a lot of these uh, Nintendo 64 memory packs are dying it's when the battery goes completely flat that SRAM can die as a result it's a little, little bit like what happens on the Neo Geo in one of my earlier Neo Geo repair videos uh, when I covered repairing the BRAM on my, uh, the backup RAM on my 1FZ someone kindly posted in the comments uh, saying actually it's not just the use of these things you know because I was talking about the fact that the battery, backup battery powers those SRAMs for prolonged periods of time you know whereas the rest of the system can be idle for periods of time switched off you know but the, the SRAM is toasting away there with the batteries Powering it, and he kindly pointed out actually, it's the la this latch up issue occurs. The battery goes almost flat down to zero, and then you get a latch up scenario where there's no supply to the uh, you know the, uh, the chip there, but the address lines and data lines and chip selects and you know and all that sort of stuff are all driven um, at a, you know a logic level. So this would be a good example of that happening actually. So I'll switch it back off and on, and I'll just program it up using the backup I've got, and we'll see whether that's. Uh, you know, managing to hold my saves okay. So if we go into the Everdrive 64 folder, into the C pack, that's the backup I took earlier. Press A, file to C pack, and then if we boot uh, Diddy Kong, we should be able to get into the file manager, I think. So I'll switch it off, switch it on. So I'll load Diddy Kong Racing, I'll hold down start, hopefully, we should get the file manager, and hopefully, if it's working, we should see my saves. Oh, yes. And before I forget, the faulty chip I've removed here, the equivalent is uh, 62256. So you could just get one of those uh, Cypress uh, 62256 or Lion Tech, I think, do one as well, LY 62256 off eBay. Obviously, check it's got the right uh, profile here. This is a SOP uh, type, I think. SOP 28, is it? Um, but in general, if yours has uh, got a 32K chip and the chip has got the same uh, package as this, it's probably going to be the same one. So it was indeed a latch up uh, problem, this is the one we've just been testing that now works, uh, that stick has come off there hasn't it? Um, yeah so I would certainly suggest that when the batteries go low or fail in these, that is exactly why these are dying, that's why you see, so what well you did, I've not seen any on eBay recently but there was a, a period of a year, a few years back where there were loads of these on eBay faulty. Um, and that's exactly what's happening and I've seen a number of videos with people going through a, a selection of them you know I've got here I've got a pile of 20 we'll go through them and work out which ones work and which ones don't there's no reason for any of them to not work not that not that level of failure and some guy had like I don't know five that worked and all the rest didn't 
and I'm sure that's what it is. I mean, depending on the type of battery on there, it could corrode and cause some damage from that, but they tend to be just CR2032s. Those don't leak, even though ones that are not rechargeable are soldered on with tabs. Um, so I would suggest, if you've got any N64 cards, get yourself an EverDrive, do a dump of your saves like I've done with the EverDrive to your SD card, uh, and then one by one, go through them and measure the batteries. You know, expect you're going to lose the contents while you remove the battery to measure it. Um, assuming it's not soldered on but to any that are like this that are you know a tray you're going to lose the contents so do make sure you back it up before you start um, and likewise make sure that battery is in the right way around and it's making a good fit before you power it on or you will kill the SRAM just as a result of having inspected the thing and check you know measuring the battery which is that's what I've done so yeah only a short video hopefully you found that interesting thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon